Recall the zero product property says if you have a times b equals zero, then a equals zero or b equals zero. Now to use this, you do have to have a zero on one side and a product on the other, which is why the terminology zero product property is so helpful. So here are some things that don't work. Um, if you had x squared minus 4 plus quantity 3x minus 6 equals 0, that doesn't become x squared minus 4 equals 0 or 3x minus 6 equals 0. The issue is that the left side isn't a product. You have a sum, right? So with that plus sign. Um, if you had x plus 3 times x minus 5 equals 9, that does not become x plus 3 equals 9 or x minus 5 equals 9. Now you have a product on the left side. You have x plus 3 times x minus 5. But the issue now is that the right side has the number 9 instead of the number 0. You need a 0 on one side. So really, zero product property. Right? The, the, the word 0 is important. The word product there is important. Uh, that We saw an extended version. Uh, something like if a times b times c equals 0, then a equals 0, or b equals 0, or c equals 0. So why, why are these um, the zero product property or any kind of extended version of it? Why are these nice? It turns one big equation into several smaller equations. So for example, the big equation x times x squared minus 4 times 3x minus 5 times x plus 3 equals 0. Look, I said times many times on the left side, and there's a 0 on the right side. So this is like an extended extended zero product property. But each of the factors on the left is set equal to 0. So x equals 0, or x squared minus 4 equals 0, or 3x minus 5 equals 0, or x plus 3 equals 0. So earlier when I said x times x squared minus 4 times uh, each time that we said the word times, that was separating one factor from another, and each of those individual factors was set equal to zero. It's much nicer to have four small equations compared to one big equation. And be sure to write the word or uh, in each of these places that you see here. Okay, let's just take a step back for a second and talk about and review the things that you can do to equations because we're, uh, I guess in a sense, adding to the list a little bit. So you can rewrite the left side or the right side of an equation using true formulas. You can add, subtract, multiply, or divide the same quantity on both sides. And that has traditionally been the two main things that we've looked at. But what's a little newer for us is you can now use a zero product property if one side is zero and the other side is a product. And maybe less new, but we're going to see a lot more of this, so new-ish, um, you can square root both sides of an equation. And when you do that, you need to be sure to include a plus or minus sign on one side, uh, the side of your choice. So let's actually see all four of these types of things you can do all in one problem. So let's solve this equation. Uh, it's an equation because of the equal sign in the middle. Okay, this equation is 3 halves plus quantity x plus 3 times quantity x squared minus 49 equals 5 halves times 3 fifths. Lots of things going on here, I get that. But first, let's do the first type of action. Simplify either the left or the right side using two formulas. So the right side is a fraction times a fraction, and we'll use the true formula for multiplying fractions together to get uh, 5 times 3 is 15, and then 2 times 5 is 10, so 15 over 10, that reduces to 3, 3 over 2. Okay, so that we simplify the right side using the fraction multiplication rule, and then skipping a step also reduce the fraction down to 3 halves. Now, I'd like to do the second kind of step, which is add, subtract, or multiply, or divide the same thing on both sides. And I'd like to subtract 3 over 2 on both sides. If you subtract 3 halves on both sides, look, there's a 3 halves on the right side. 3 halves minus 3 halves is 0. On the left side, there's a 3 halves plus whatever. So subtracting 3 halves on both sides, that's, that's gone from that side. Now, take a look at the type of equation we have. We have x plus 3 multiplied by x squared minus 49 equals 0. This is a good time to use a zero product property, right? So there's a zero on one side and a product on the other. So we split this up and have x plus 3 equals 0 or x squared minus 49 equals 0. Don't forget that word or. Now we have these two smaller equations. Um, the first equation, we can um, subtract three on both sides, I get x equals negative three. For the second equation, we have x squared minus 49 equals zero. There's actually two ways to do that, but to try to illustrate the fourth thing you can do, uh, to prep for that, let's add 49 to both sides. So you get x squared equals 49. And now to that last equation here, if you square root both sides of x squared equals 49, you have x equals plus or minus 7. So in this one problem, we've demonstrated all four types of things you can do to equations.